Sola Scriptura, everyone. This is His Word Only. It's time to open up the box. And today we're going to be tackling the subject of marriage. This is a quite an easy task for me today, man. Because I only got one chapter for you guys. <laughs> and it's going to be a short video because this chapter has it all. It's got how you should act within a marriage. If you should divorce a man who doesn't believe you but still wants to be with you. like It's cool. And if we would just read the word of God, there would probably be a whole lot less divorces. And if we would just act the way that it says to act. I mean, picture yourself doing this stuff, you know, and see if this is what you would do, right? Because this is amazing stuff here, right? And I wish people would know this, you know, and the Lord has been putting this on my heart, you know, that I did it in a video, um, How to Live in the Kingdom, a while back. So I'm just bringing it up here again because this is all I need to bring up. <laughs> but anyways, let's get into it. 1 Corinthians chapter 7. Now concerning the things whereof ye wrote unto me, it is good for a man not to touch a woman, nevertheless to avoid fornication. Now, what does fornication mean? Cheating, right? Basically, cheating on your husband, wife. It's more in that sense it can mean, you know, in sexual connotations and stuff like that. Well, which it does, but I mean more like uh, just going out there having a bunch of, you know, coitus, <laughs> I guess. Trying to be careful here, you know. But anyways, you know, I guess we're adults here, you know. Sex is between a husband and a wife not between a man and a woman you see what you see what i did there sex is between a husband and a wife not between a man and a woman it you know when let's say you wait until you're married Right? That's what the Lord commands us to do, right? To wait until you're married. That you you build a foundation. And when you have sex, right? There's a bonding hormone that bonds you together. Right? When you do when you have sex with outside of that, right? It becomes without the foundation, right? of the love and the trust and you guys built over the year or two years that you guys been together, right? And what's going to happen is you're going to be addicted to those endorphins, but outside of sex, you know, there isn't going to be anything. You guys aren't going to really be, have much in common. Two different goals. She wants to go this way. You want to go that way. And there's no foundation to keep you guys together. Right? And when it burns out. And you get used to those endorphins. Right? Because there's going to come a time. When your body. Gets used to that. And it adapts to that. Right? Adapts to those endorphins. And. There's going to be a. <laughs> You know, a time where you get bored and your brain's not getting that that high that it was getting, right? So, when you wait to have sex, right, you get that bonding agent, you get that, or hormone, <laughs> not agent, um, but you also have that foundation. So that way, the, those two towers, right? got to be on the right foundation if not they're gonna and it's just gonna be a mess right but if you have that foundation when stuff 
does hit it and come in the way and you guys kind of, you know, whatever, you got a good foundation, right? And after the sex and stuff like that, you guys got something else, right? You guys go off and travel, or, you know what I mean? You guys got to have maybe different personalities, but you got to have the same goals too, right? But anyways, I'm digressing, digressing. And by the way, I am not an expert, okay? This is just from experience and what the Lord has shown me. Anyways, I digress. Let's let him talk instead of me. Let every man have his own wife and let every woman have her own husband. So this means man does not have ten wives, woman does not have ten husbands. Just one husband, one wife, right? Okay, let the husband render unto the wife due benevolence. All right, what does benevolence mean? The quality of being well, meaning, and kindness. That means you don't treat her like a dog. You don't say, woman, get in the kitchen. You know, you don't beat her. You know, oops, wrong button. You treat her with kindness, love, respect, right? And likewise, also the wife to the husband. There's the equality. You bet to see how equal everything is here. The wife, you see, the wife hath not power over her own body, but the husband. Now, wait a minute, ladies. Don't leave just yet. And likewise, also the husband hath not power over his own body, but the wife. So, what does that mean? That means the husband's body needs to be covered up, right? He shouldn't be taking off a shirt when ladies are around. You know, he he uh, doesn't need to be. Now he can wear shorts, you know, and you know, shirt and stuff like that. But he doesn't need to be taking off his shirt, right? That's your wife's, right? Your wife only gets to see that. Same with you ladies, right? Cover yourselves up if you're with a man. You don't need to be showing off, you know? It's not about, oh, excuse that, but um, it's not about, um, hold on a second, you know, giving in to the patriarchy. You know, you're covering up because you have somebody. <laughs> you don't need, you know, to be showing off to other guys. Same with the man. You don't need to be showing off to other women. If you're flirting with other women, then you shouldn't be dating in the first place, <laughs> right? But anyways, defraud yet not one another. So real quick. Uh, nope, I don't want to subscribe to you. No thanks. Really, to deprive of something by deception or fraud. Basically, this means to deprive. one, Like, get away from each other for a little bit. Is what it means. It doesn't mean like you're defrauding one another or whatever. This, in this instance, it means to deprive each other, right? To get away from each other for a little bit. Defraud ye or ye not one another, except it be with consent for a time that you guys both agree on this, right? That ye may give yourselves not to go date other guys into or date other girls, right? But to fasting and prayer and to ask God what to do and give him the you know, ask him for strength to keep this thing going, right? We never do that, do we? But anyways, and come together again, ready? That Satan tempt you not for your incontinency. That Satan doesn't tempt you to get away with another woman or another guy, right? We need to read 
his word. Right? This isn't me trying to force religion on you. This is God saying, hey, this is the way, the right way to do things. <laughs> Imagine that. You know, but God gets called a misogynist for saying this stuff. Like, do, do you see any misogyny anywhere in here? Have you seen any misogyny yet? Or heard any, I guess I should say. <laughs> you know? I mean, they they love to defame his name, right? Anyways, but I speak this by permission and not of commandment. For I would that all men were even as my, I, I myself. But every man hath this proper gift of God, one after this manner, and another after that, right? So if you're going to be single, that you're doing what God's will, and that you're abstaining from sex, right? Wait until marriage, even if you're single, right? For I would that, um, anyways, but every man hath this proper gift, manner, um, and another after that. Sorry, I read that already. I say, therefore, to the unmarried and widows, it is good for them if they abide even as I, right? That unmarried, being unmarried, but doing the will of God, doing something for God, right? And following his ways, doing his will. But, ready? If they can't, cannot contain, which means they, you know, don't have the discipline to abstain from sex and all that and screwing everything that walks, <laughs> you know, let them marry, for it is better to marry than to burn. Did you hear that? It is better to marry than to burn, right? So it's probably not a good thing to screw everything that walks. It's better to wait for the right person. <laughs> you know. Crazy. Crazy how that works. How science is catching up to the Bible a little bit. You know. With, when God says you become one. And how the hormone literally bonds you together. I mean. They're also. And I don't mean to get dirty here. You know, but the sperm goes into the woman, right? And that DNA gets becomes part of her. That's another reason why we shouldn't be screwing everything that walks, right? Because even scientifically, all that DNA is getting in there. And then, of course, spiritually speaking, you're getting all these soul ties. You're getting all that baggage, right? But anyways... It, it, okay, and unto the married I command, yet not I, but the Lord. So he, now he's saying, so he went from saying this is not a commandment, but this is a permission from God, right? So now he's saying, and unto the married I command, yet not I, but the Lord, let not the wife depart from her husband at all costs. Keep that thing rolling if you can, right? But and if she depart, let her remain unmarried or be reconciled to her husband. And let not the husband put away his wife. Right? God doesn't really like divorce all that much. Can you tell? He wants you to stay together. You know? If you guys married and come together and become one, man, he, he wants you to be together. To have a healthy relationship, right? But anyways, let not the wife depart from her husband, but I, and if she, blah, 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 blah. Okay. Husband put away his wife. But to the rest, speak I, not the Lord. If any brother hath a, or hath a wife that believeth not, and she be pleased to dwell with him, let him not put her away. Now listen to this, guys. There's a lot of people with this. And the woman which hath an husband that believeth not, 
and if he be pleased to dwell with her. Notice as they're pleased to be with her and treat her at least with respect and kindness, right? They just don't believe, right? It doesn't say stay with him, you know, after he beats you to death, you know. And I don't mean to get, you know, graphic here, but we live in a crappy world, you know, unfortunately. But um, anyways, but yeah, he wants you to stay together. <laughs> and the woman which hath a husband that believeth not, and if he be pleased to dwell, oh yeah, sorry. For the unbelieving husband is sanctified by the wife, and the unbelieving wife is sanctified by the husband. Else were, or else were your children unclean. But now are they holy? That's simple, isn't it? <laughs> God is a merciful God. Right? But if the unbelieving depart, let him depart. A brother or a sister is not under bondage in such cases. But God hath called us to peace. Right? If it's not peaceful and you're not at peace, then you're okay to leave them. And that doesn't mean if he's not making to every your whim and he didn't do this for me, so I'm gone. There's you know something. Sorry, I didn't mean to. That's <laughs> just a guy's fake woman voice, you know. But anyways, I, I digress. Okay, and the woman which has or hath a husband, blah, 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 blah. but if the unbelieving depart, let him depart. For okay, I'm sorry, guys. For what knowest thou, O wife, whether thou shalt save thy husband, or how knowest thou, O man, whether thou shalt save thy wife? But as God hath distributed to every man, as the Lord hath called to every one, so let him walk. And so are ordained I in all churches. Is any man called being circumcised? Let him not become uncircumcised. Is any called in uncircumcision? Let him not be circumcised. Circumcision is nothing. And uncircumcision is nothing. But the keeping of the commandments of God. Uh oh. Wait a minute. Is wait wait, so so I don't forget where I'm at here. <laughs> okay, nineteen. This is Corinthians, wasn't it? Paul. Let's see. Let's see here. Huh. Paul. The same guy, huh, the same guy that the modern day church tells us don't keep his commandments, right? And don't follow his ways. You don't have to do that anymore, right? Because we're not under the law of sin and death. So, yeah, we're not under the law of sin and death, which was you die because you broke his commandments. <laughs> right? Because Jesus died for our sins. Right? He didn't take away. There's still sin in this world. Why? Because what is sin? Breaking his ways, breaking his laws. Right? But anyways, there's Paul saying to keep his commandments. Wow. Wow. Sorry. Trying to do the old um, Owen Wilson. Wow. Sorry. Let every man abide in the same calling wherein he was called. Art thou called being a servant? Care not for it, but if thou mayest be made free, use it rather. For he that is called in the Lord, being a servant, is the Lord's free man. Likewise, also he that is called, being free, is Christ's servant. 
ye are brought with a price, but not ye the servants of men, brethren. Let ye every man wherein he is called therein abide with God. Now concerning virgins, I have no commandment of the Lord, yet I give my judgment as one that hath obtained mercy of the Lord to be faithful. I suppose thereof that is good for the present distress, I say, that is good for a man so to be. I wish I was. Unfortunately, I'm not. But anyways, but and if thou marry, thou hast not sinned. And if a virgin marry, she hath not sinned. Nevertheless, such shall have trouble in the flesh, but I spare you. But this I say, brethren, the time is short. It remaineth that both that they have wives be as though they had none. And they that weep as though they wept not. And they that rejoice as though they rejoice not. And they that buy as though they possess not. And they that use this world as not abusing it, for the fashion of this world passeth away. Ain't that the truth? I don't know if you guys remember. These Jinko jeans used to be the thing, man, right? They were really baggy. And, you know, my sister used to wear them. You know, she was a tomboy. And, but anyways, that's gone now. <laughs> Ain't nobody wearing those things anymore. But anyways, but I would have you without carefulness. He that is unmarried careth for the things that belong to the Lord, how he may please the Lord. But he that is married careth for the things that are of the world, how he may please his wife. There is a difference also between a wife and a virgin. The unmarried woman careth for the things of the Lord that she may be holy both in body and in spirit. But she that is married cared for the things of the world, how she may, be, er, may please her husband. And this I speak for your own profit, not that I may cast a snare upon you, but for that which is comely, or comely, and that ye may attend upon the Lord without distraction. So that way you're not being pulled apart, right? But if any man think that he be, uh, behaveth himself uncomely toward his virgin, if she pass the flower of her age and need so require, let him so, uh, do that he will. He sinneth not. Let him marry her, though. Right? Anyways, 37. Nevertheless, he that standeth steadfast in his heart, having no necessity, but hath power over his own will, and hath so decreed in his heart that he will keep his virgin doeth well. So then he that giveth her in marriage doeth well, but he that giveth her not in marriage doeth better. The wife is bound by the law as long as her husband liveth, but if her husband be dead, she is at liberty to, uh, to be married to whom she will only in the Lord. Which means that the Lord allows it and she's praying and, right, and asks the Lord. But she is happier if she is so abide after my judgment. And I think also that I have the Spirit of God. Amen. And there you guys go. I don't claim to have all the answers. I am not an expert. You know, you guys can read this for yourself. I encourage you guys, couples, if there, if you see any couple having problems, anything like that, right? If this is, you know, a video to share, share this one, right? People need to see this verse. You don't have to share this video. Just show them this chapter, right? 1 Corinthians chapter 7. It's an amazing chapter that all married couples, all men, all women should hear, right? And it's a good rebuttal to the misogynist claim, <laughs> right? Because I saw 
pretty good equality there, right? For both judgments for both husband and wife, right? But anyways. Say a quick prayer. Lord, we just thank you for this day. What you have done for us. We pray that you keep couples together, Lord. Especially the ones that are in you. Even though there's darkness upon this world now. That you bring light to people as they're at their wit's end. And we need to bring light to the world, Lord. Because without you, we are nothing. And we just thank you, Lord, for showing us the truth, even though we don't deserve it. We just pray for Ukraine, Russia. I know it's probably not the popular opinion to play, pray for Russia, but we pray for all these nations, Lord, for the Chinese people, for the Taiwanese people, Lord, for everybody that you calm everybody down, Lord. We just pray that we can bring, you know, a little bit of peace to this world. And that way we can get some more remnant. Some more people to the fold, Lord. That is some cult but as a relationship to Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. Now, oh, one last thing. You are king, and there was no one like you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You guys have a wonderful day.